So the third generation iPhone SE is here, but who exactly is this smartphone aimed at? Well, as we'll discuss, it could be a variety of people. It could be ones upgrading from an older phone like the iPhone 8 or even before, or maybe a previous user who's stepping back into the Apple ecosystem. Whatever the case, this is the cheapest new iPhone that Apple currently sells, and it comes with a home button. But here's the curveball. You can get an iPhone 11, which comes with way more camera-centric bells and whistles for just $70 more. Now, I'm not telling you that you should not consider the iPhone SE 3 because it comes with a processor that's two generations faster than the iPhone 11 or the previous iPhone SE. But the iPhone 11's camera features, namely its support for Face ID, its higher resolution front-facing camera, and a much more robust dual camera rear system makes for a compelling device even though it's going on three generations old. But with all that being said, if you're looking for a cheap entry-level iPhone, then the iPhone SE 3 is definitely one worth considering. Let's look at its top features right now. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so here is the iPhone SE. Let's go ahead and quickly unbox it and see what's inside this third generation iPhone SE. Now, like all iPhone SE models, this comes with the latest generation processor in an older style chassis. In this case, the iPhone 8 chassis. So here's what's inside the box. You get the Design by Apple in California packet. You get your lightning to USB-C cable. And inside that packet, you get a SIM eject tool. This does have dual eSIM, by the way, so you don't have to use a physical SIM. You get the regulatory information and, of course, your lonely little Apple sticker. So again, here's your lightning to USB cable, and that's pretty much it. All right, so top feature number one, the small size and the physical home button. And that physical home button can be very appealing to those that don't want to rely on swipe gestures. Perhaps older ones that uh, would find it easier to interact with a physical home button. And that home button gives you touch ID biometric authentication with a fingerprint instead of using your face, like with face ID enabled phones. And that too may appeal to certain types of users. The iPhone SE has a decidedly old school feel about it uh, with that physical home button, the small form factor. You can see it stacked up here next to the iPhone 13 mini. And while the mini is the smallest iPhone that Apple sells, it has a larger screen than the iPhone SE 3, which only has a 4.7 inch display compared to the mini's 5.4 inch display. Now it's not complete apples to apples because these phones sport different aspect ratios, but basically what I found is that both devices are more or less just as easy to navigate when interacting with the touchscreen. Now like all iPhone SE models, this iPhone SE third generation sports the latest system on the chip, which is in the flagship models like the iPhone 13, that being the A15. And that, folks, is one of the biggest advantages that the iPhone SE 3 enjoys over something like the iPhone 11, for instance, which sports the A13, just like the previous generation iPhone SE. You also get an extra gigabyte of RAM and a significant upgrade in performance over the A13 that was in the iPhone SE 2 and the iPhone 11. So here's my iPhone 13, which is the latest and greatest, right? And here is the iPhone SE 3. You can see they're basically the same as far as Geekbench scores are concerned. So the CPU performance increases, the GPU performance increases do yield real world benefits. For instance, with games, I've noticed that one of my go-to games, Hot Lava, which is an Apple Arcade game, runs smoother, less frame rate hiccups and things like that. Uh, just an overall better gaming experience. And you'll notice that with the various games that you play, I played NBA 2K, uh, several other games, and performance was just better when compared to the previous generation iPhone SE. I also noticed that when I was doing like exports with iMovie, uh, obviously the A15 yielded faster export times than the A13. So, I mean, yeah, obviously you're going from an A13 to an A15, you should expect performance increases and that's exactly what you get when upgrading to the SE3. 
Now, perhaps the most noteworthy upgrade from the SE2 to the SE3 is the inclusion of 5G capability. Now, you don't get the fastest millimeter wave that you get on the iPhone 13, but that's mostly useless in real world scenarios anyway. More importantly, you do get both low and mid band 5G capability with the iPhone SE3. You can see the SE3 on the left with 5G connectivity and the LTE enabled SE2 on the right and the performance speaks for itself, right? Now the iPhone SE3 features improved battery life and most of that is owed to the optimizations in the A15. However, there is a slightly larger battery in the iPhone SE3 and combined with the optimizations that yields roughly two hours of additional battery life. And in my anecdotal testing over the past week, battery life seemed to be within the ballpark of Apple's claims. Now the iPhone SE3 gains additional camera features thanks to the A15 Bionic. You get smart HDR4, which is great for portraits, specifically when there are multiple people and it will automatically adjust contrast, lighting, skin tones, so that everyone looks their best. And there's also Deep Fusion, which takes advantage of that 16 core neural engine to bring out subtle details and textures and patterns. And then there are photographic styles. Now these aren't filters, but they are more like custom presets that you can enable or disable at any time. You can see I have one enabled right now, photographic style. I can tap that button in the upper right hand corner to access the photographic style interface, or I can swipe up like that and tap the button here to access it as well. So you have your standard style with no effects applied. Swipe over, you see your vibrant warm, uh, but this can be customized. So you have your tone and you can set that to vibrant, or you can set it to rich. And then you also have your color temperature on the other side. You can set that to warm or set it to cool, just like this. So there's warm, I'll slide over to set it to cool. So I have vibrant cool in this case. But like I was saying, these aren't cookie cutter filters that you simply apply on top of a photo, no. Your iPhone selectively applies these adjustments so that things like skin tones or the sky don't look like totally off base. They still look natural, yet at the same time, you get your own custom look based on the photographic style that you've selected. And again, the A15 is what helps make this possible. So once we take a photo, you can see here a photo I've taken with the photographic style. If I tap the info button, I can see that style has been applied just like that. Now let's talk about the price because this thing starts at $429 for 64 gigabytes of storage, right? So it's $270 cheaper than the cheapest iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 mini, but it's also $30 more than the previous generation iPhone SE, which costs just $400. Now let's talk about some not so good things. You get the same boring design, which is both a plus and a minus, depending on how you look at it. And you get the same boring colors roughly, right? They're not the exact colors, but for instance, black looks very similar to midnight. Midnight is more of a bluish color, whereas black is more of a, well, a grayish dark color, uh, but they look roughly the same. So if you're looking for a design or you're looking for colors that are drastically different than the previous generation iPhone SE, yeah, you're not gonna find that here with the third generation. One of the biggest disappointments is the lack of night mode, which lets you do a long exposure for better low light photography. So you can see here is a night mode shot. And let's compare that with no night mode on the iPhone SE3. And yeah, it doesn't look all that, doesn't look all that hot. What do you guys think? And then you get the same old crusty seven megapixel front facing camera. Obviously this isn't face ID enabled or anything like that, but it would have been nice to have a front facing camera upgrade for FaceTime calls. But by far the biggest downside is the lack of MagSafe support, which is probably one of the greatest smartphone innovations that we've had in some time, right? MagSafe, of course, that magnetic connector that allows you to use all sorts of accessories like the MagSafe battery pack or the MagSafe wallet to just simply attach it to the back of your phone magnetically. It's secure, it's connected. But here with the iPhone SE3, yeah, there, there, there's no MagSafe support at all. So your MagSafe battery pack or your MagSafe wallet is just gonna slide off the phone just like that. So it's just disappointing not to have MagSafe because it's honestly such a great feature. Now it may sound like I've been pretty hard on the iPhone SE3, 
But let me assure you that this is a good smartphone. It has the latest generation system on a chip, which makes it as fast as an iPhone 13. However, it's the camera. Like if you're a camera enthusiast, this is a hard sell in my opinion. In my opinion, if you're a camera enthusiast who's on the budget and not so much worried about speed, then the iPhone 11 for just 70 bucks more seems like the better buy in my opinion, if you're a, a camera enthusiast, that's what I'm trying to say. You get that dual camera module with an ultra wide camera in tow. You get 4K video shooting on both the front and rear cameras. You get a higher megapixel front facing camera with face ID support. You get night mode support. It's a more camera centric phone than the SE3 for sure. But the SE3 is cheaper and it's also faster. It also has a home button and it's less unwieldy in the hand. And by the way, it has 5G connectivity, which the iPhone 11 and the previous generation iPhone SE do not. If you're not a camera enthusiast and you definitely want a physical home button, the iPhone SE 3 at 429 is a pretty decent buy. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.